Hey, scholars and guitar hounds, it's good to be back with you. Now, some of you may know that I do a lot of work with guitars. I build some at home, I run the Purdue Guitar Lab, and I write books and things like that in my role as a professor at Purdue. One of the questions I get a lot is how to get started designing guitars. So let's talk about that today. Now, the good news is that you can get started with three numbers. And we're going we're to go over those. Now, the details get fairly involved, and maybe we'll talk about that a little later. But I can get you started in just a few minutes today. First thing we need is a guitar. Happen to have one on me. This is a fairly generic guitar. This is a Fender CF140S. It's a, uh, just a, a inspired by a Martin OM. It's a pretty typical acoustic guitar, and I like it. I've, I've done some stuff to it. I've hot-rotted it a little bit. Um, in case you're checking, this one is no longer uh, made by Fender. It's been replaced by something called a CC60S. I have one of those as well. And uh, by the way, uh, I like them a lot. They're very inexpensive, and it's a pretty good guitar. It's a lot of value for your money, so I recommend. Um, everything we're going to talk about here today works equally well on acoustic guitars and electric guitars. So it doesn't matter which one you're designing. You, you can stay with the video here. So the three numbers you're going to need are the width of the nut. Now this thing up here, this little, this one is bone on this guitar, but a lot of times it's plastic. That sets the width of the neck up here and the width of the strings. Here on this end, on the bridge, this, this piece of plastic down here on this one, it actually is plastic. Uh, sets the string uh, spacing back here at the bridge. And the last thing you need to know is the length of the string, and it's called the scale length. So the three numbers you need are nut width, string spacing at the bridge, and scale length. If you've got those, you're good to go. You can, you can go pretty far down the path before you need more information than that. So before we go to my computer so I can show you some of the drawings and pictures of instruments I've made, uh, let's talk about what reasonable values for these numbers are. Now, the nut on uh, almost all acoustic guitars and electric guitars I know of is either 1 and 11 sixteenths or 1 and 3 quarters. Now, if you're not in the United States, those are stupid dimensions. The guitar industry in the United States mostly works on decimal inches still and sometimes on fractional inches. It almost never works on millimeters as it should. I can't fix that. So if you want decimals, um, the 1 and 11 sixteenths is 1.69 something inches. 1 and 3 quarters is 1.75 inches. And when I sit down later, I'll figure out the uh, uh, metric equivalents and I'll put them on the screen here. The width down here is determined by the taper of the neck and some other things. It's a little over two inches. Two and an eighth, two and three sixteenths is about normal. So 2.1 to about 2.3 inches down here is pretty typical. The scale length on almost all guitars is either 25 and a half inches, that's 647.7 millimeters, or 24 and three quarters. And I can't remember how many millimeters that is. I'll put it on the screen as well. There are others. There are many others. You can set the scale length to be anything you want. Right? The math works out. But practically speaking, almost all the instruments you're going to see are either 24 and 3 quarters, which sometimes they call the short scale or the Gibson scale, because Gibson makes a lot of guitars with that scale length, or 25 and a half, which they often call the long scale or the Fender scale. Most Fender instruments use 25 and a half inch scale length. This one happens to be 25 and a half inch scale length. The longest practical scale I've ever seen for a guitar is a baritone guitar, uh, has, a, has tuned a little lower and has a longer neck. And I want to say it's about 27 inches. The practical low end for me is 20 inches. Uh, they get smaller than that. Ukuleles are smaller than that, but I have fairly large hands. And I just, when, when the, the scale length gets shorter than about 20 inches, I just can't get my fingers in there anywhere. So if you have smaller hands or thinner fingers and you prefer a shorter scale length, knock yourself out. The uh, scale length of a mandolin and a four quarter violin are the same, and I think want to say they're around 13 inches or so. So 13 inches is the smallest you'll ever see almost. 
There might be a uke smaller than that, but I'm not sure. For me, the practical limits to scale length are 20 inches on the low end and about 25 and a half or 26 on the high end. If you don't know what else to do, and you're doing a full-size instrument, just pick 25 and a half and go. Uh, lots of the plans are uh, sized for that. Lots of measuring tools are sized for that. If you don't, if you almost need a reason not to do 25 and a half or maybe 24 and three quarters. So that's, those are pretty much the limits. Now, there's a relationship between nut width and string spacing. The distance from the edge of the string to the edge of the neck is called setback. And setback is, is a constant down the neck. So even though the neck gets wider as you go uh, closer to the bridge, the distance between the edge of the neck and the edge of the string doesn't change, usually. Once in a while, somebody will do it. But by and large, uh, the setback, the distance from the edge of the string to the edge of the neck, is constant. So once you know nut width, the setback is pretty much uniform everywhere. It's around three millimeters or an eighth of an inch. And you know the string spacing at the bridge, that tells you the neck taper. And once you know this, the scale length, that tells you the distance from the nut to the saddle. That sizes most of the guitar. The next thing you can do is start looking at headstocks and body shapes and things like that. But those will be for another video. Let's go to my computer and see what that looks like when you lay everything out. Here we are on my computer and I'd like to show you basically two things. The first is where to get good information on guitars, particularly dimensional information because that's what you need the most of. And the other is to give you an example of what I do when I design a guitar. So let's start with the, the uh, informational part. Here's the Fender website. Fender makes lots and lots of cool guitars. And so you think, well, I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to get myself a, let's see, how about a Mustang? Mustangs are cool. Here we are. Oh, that's a terrible color. Oh, I like that one. That's a very swoopy looking guitar. I'll use this. Features. Specs, here we go. Well, let's see, what does it give me? It gives me scale length, that's pretty good. Fingerboard radius, we'll talk about that in another video. Nut width, and that's pretty much 1 and 11 16 165 is kind of the Fender standard. If, you have to, if you're looking at a Fender design and you don't know what the nut width is, it's probably 165 or pretty close, which is 42 millimeters. But string spacing, all that other stuff, it's not here. Hmm, okay. So where else can we look? Well, let's see. We can go to one of Mark's books. I've written three guitar books. The first is called Engineering the Guitar. The second, this one is Technology of the Guitar. And the third one that just came out as I'm uh, recording this is called Acoustic Guitar Design. Now, this one in particular is pretty pricey. I didn't set the price for it. Uh, Springer did. And so uh, there are other ways to get it. I, I make very little money off these things, so I don't really care where you get them. Um, if you have access to a university library that has a Springer contract, and most do, all my books or Springer books are available as free downloads. Just go to the university library and look them up. Now here's something I found out just as I was getting ready to record this. You can see I'm not logged in right now. I mean, I can download my books as the author, but I'm not logged in right now, so I don't think Springer, the Springer website knows who I am. Watch this. I can just click Download PDF. See if it'll do this here. And there it is. I mean, and there's the whole thing over here. So it looks to me like uh, you might be able to just click the Download button and download the PDF. I hope that works for you. That's fine with me. It's great. The number I track is this number over here, how many people have downloaded it. And that's the number my boss tracks, so I really like that number. So here's one. Technology of the guitar uh, covers acoustic and electric guitars and uh, has lots of information about both. And it doesn't use any math beyond junior high school algebra, so you don't need to be freaked out about math. Uh, Bob Taylor wrote the foreword for me, which was awfully nice of him. Here's the new one that just came out. This is acoustic guitar design. And the forward on this one was written by Tim Shaw. Also did me a big favor there. And again, I think you can just download it. Jeez, it sure looks like it. Well, this is great. 
And of course, it's on sketchy download sites. But all, all my books are on sketchy download sites around the world. Um, so this has got a ton of information in it as well. All of my books have very, very specific information in them. All the dimensions you'll ever need are in there, along with all the background you need on pickups and strings and physics and whatever else. So if you're looking for something else online, my favorite is Stumac. Stuart McDonald is the name of uh, the guitar supply company. There are a couple in the US. The two big ones are Stuart McDonald or Stumac. So the website we're at right now is stewmac.com. The other one is Luthier's Mercantile, and that's lmii.com. If you're uh, overseas, outside the US, uh, there's certainly going to be domestic suppliers for you as well. Now, I don't have a business relationship with either one of them, with either Stumac or Luthier's Mercantile. Um, I like them but they don't know I'm doing this and I'm not getting any money for from doing this or anything so this is just my own opinion if Stumac doesn't have it you don't need it it's pretty much that simple now if you're a bargain shopper you're gonna figure out quick that Stumac doesn't have the lowest prices everywhere but they have the highest quality and their support is just can't be beat so let's say we're gonna go look for an acoustic bridge let's go to parts bridges acoustic and just get the generic one here so there's the bridges and here's one of the reasons you go to Stumac apart from the fact that their quality is quite good they have dimension drawings of most of their uh, parts so you can use this to help you design now the one thing you really need is not on here is string spacing but there it is right there string spread is what they call it so it's two and an eighth or inches or 54 millimeters well that's the number you need and that's center to center so it's the center of the treble E string to the center of the bass E string now let's see let's get rid of some of this stuff here there's that let's say you want an electric bridge so go here parts bridges and let's go to an electric guitar because we're new at this we're going to pick a fixed bridge one that doesn't have a tremolo on it now one I like rather a lot is this top loading hardtail bridge top loading means you don't have to drill holes through the body and load the strings from the back you can load the strings right from the top of this one those holes right there those are where the strings go through so literally all you have to do is punch let's see how many holes is it one, two, there's a punch five holes in the top of the guitar, screw this thing down, and you're done. There's, you don't have to inset it, you don't have to drill access holes, nothing. It, it, this is pretty hard to mess up. So there's the dimension drawing, but again, there's no string spacing here. Well, just look down here, and there's the string spacing. It's 50 millimeters, so you're good to go there, too. So that's the great place to find... Uh, dimensional information online and of course download my books if you can get a free download that's great I'm not trying to sell you a book so let's see what I do when I'm designing guitars here's one I laid out for class a little while back I was experimenting with a different body shape and the program I'm using right now is called vCarve VCarve is actually originally came with our ShopBot CNC routers. So this one does 2D CAD, but you go over here and it also does tool paths. Um, I use this a lot. In fact, this is probably my primary CAD tool. You can go to 3D modeling if you want, and you probably should eventually. Uh, I'm not real good at 3D modeling, and the guitars I make are mostly 2D. Electric guitars mostly 2D. So you can get surprisingly far down the path with a simple 2d package like this in the CAD this is this is sort of the crayon of the CAD world this is as simple as CAD gets so it suits me fine so we can zoom in here a little bit so on this one I set zero at the nut and the center line of the guitar so there's the center line this one I decided to make the nut 1.75 inches wide that line right there is the nominal position of the saddles and that's 25 and a half. I happen to do this all in millimeters, or in inches, I should say. But it works just as well in metric, of course.
Now this isn't a very detailed drawing. I did another guitar a while ago that turned out to be pretty successful. It's a little, this is a funny little instrument. This is a lute shaped acoustic guitar and it has a scale length of 20 inches. And this is the plan I drew for it. I, I made the guitar off this plan. So let's look at some of the numbers I have here. Let's zoom way in. I did this all in inches, of course, um, because I'm American, but certainly do this in millimeters. So the nut is 1.7 inches, so just a tick wider, a little more than a millimeter wider, 050 wider than the standard uh, fender. This number right here, this is string spacing. All I did was back off an uh, eighth of an inch, and that's the string spacing. Now this one, you'll notice I put the zero right there at the twelfth fret. Uh, when you're, I, I find that when I'm designing, it's easier to put, for me anyway, to put the origin at the twelfth fret. By the way, twelfth fret is one octave up the neck. And the reason I do that is an awful lot of my guitars are twelfth fret guitars. I do folk instruments a lot, and they're, I have a lot of 12 fret necks, so that's why I chose that. Down here, you can see what I did. Okay, that's the string spacing at the saddle, one point or 2.125 inches, so that's two and an eighth. And the, this distance from here to here, let's figure out what that is. Point three seven five. So that's the projected width of the neck. If I uh, take the neck, the edges of the neck, and project it out here, that's the projected width. Okay. So if I were to sight down the neck, those, those are the edges of the neck. Those would be my sighting lines. Let's get rid of that. Somewhere on here, I put the overall length of the instrument. See all this text here? I've learned to put this text right on the drawing. There's the scale length, there's the body length, body width, body depth at the tail, tail's back here, string spacing at the bridge, string spacing at the nut, and the nut width, and then the sound hole diameter. I write these right on the drawing. In fact, this, and all the text with it, I cut out and make a template. I laser out a clear template with all those numbers right on it, and uh, I find that to be really, really useful. So hopefully that'll get you started. So just to remember, the three numbers you need are nut width, which is right there, string spacing at the bridge, which on this is right here, and the scale length, which on this instrument is 20 inches. So I hope this helps. I hope this gets you started designing guitars. I'll talk to you next time.